very good morning everyone oh, full of energy good so uh, so as you know this is going to be toppers session is it live can you start okay. so it is toppers session and uh, we have a very special topper today so sumit uh, welcome sumit takur so with a clap <laughs> special because uh, so he came to ogp like you you know uh, as soon as he graduated he came here so he was part of 2019 ogp and then in his very first attempt he went till interview and missed the rank by 3 marks so he started from zero like you people he went till interview in the first attempt and uh, his optional was public administration in the second attempt he could not clear prelims because he was was hoping to get the rank and you know not in the mood to then third attempt he is here with rank 2 263 so with rank 263 and uh, recently service was allocated and he is allotted indian administrative service right so he is very special because uh, i have known him like you know like most of the toppers so we, we were closely associated so from ogp days with evaluating his essays and uh, guiding for interview of course the entire credit because of his hard work very hard working person so uh, despite coming from very poor background uh, never complained about anything right so he went with the flow he, went, he trusted everyone and uh, he gave everything for the examination so in between he went with uh, he, he had to face many hardships personal hardships despite that he was able to focus on the examination and crack the exam especially during two covid years so he had to face lots of struggle because uh, family members were affected and uh, today he will be talking about so uh, the overall preparation not about insights or anything so how he prepared so this is not a promotional uh, talk or anything so this is about he, he would like you would share his experience so you will have so many questions to ask any question you can ask him so first he will talk after that so he will address all your questions so over to sumit okay. thank you sumit so good morning everyone good morning sir and uh, first of all i would like to express my gratitude to vinay sir uh, for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to interact with you all uh, so first of all uh, i express uh, my welcome to all of you to this session and before we begin uh, i want that this session uh, when you go back you should carry with you lots of positivity lots of hope and you know uh, determination to uh, sail through this exam or your dream in any circumstance which is coming to you so uh, first of all uh, very briefly i'll introduce about myself my uh, journey for towards this exam uh, then what was my strategy to clear this exam and after that we will keep this session interactive whatever you feel you have query with regard to anything with regard to this exam strategy tackling situations in life anything you can pose me the questions so it has to be more like you know uh, collaborating rather than me speaking uh, single handedly so for first 15 minutes i'll talk single handedly not after that so uh, i graduated in 2018 and i am an engineer uh, btech from computer science engineering and i hail from jharkhand uh, so right after engineering i came to uh, upsc was my class 9th dream okay so i came to uh, inside cis in 2018 july so at that time uh, i i already had books but i never opened them so <laughs> during college uh, in the last days of college uh, insights had an scholarship test it was a very tough test at that time uh, we were asked some very good questions around 30 20 30 questions it was a arduous test so i attempted that and i received a mail from insights that uh, you have been qualified uh, for scholarship i felt very happy before that i had gone to delhi but uh, for some reasons i thought i will not prepare from delhi so i came to bangalore 
So it was July 2018. I was part of OGP 2019, and uh, things started very well. And also, I cleared like so. What I want to say you is that July 2018 was the first time when I started preparing for this exam. Okay. So before that, I had zero background. So I just want to be very frank over here and very real, so that you know you can relate with whatever I talk. It should be relatable. It should be yes, we can do it. It's doable. So then July 2018, I began my journey. And 2019, 3rd June, I gave the prelims. I was on border, but then I cleared it with more than general cutoff. So then, uh, 20 uh, September 2019, I gave mains, first mains. Then uh, I qualified mains. At the same time, I had uh, given CAPF. I qualified uh, qualified CAPF. So then, 20 uh, 14 January 2020, results came for first attempt, and I qualified for interview. And let me tell you, uh, excuse me, can I get a marker? Okay, fine. Sorry. So first of all, in my uh, first mains, I had left 140 marks. Okay. So this was even a great surprise to me as well, because after the exam, I called my parents and I told them that uh, this time, a lot of questions I have left, uh, I would not be able to make it to the interview, I guess. So 140 marks I had left. And even after leaving of 140 marks, I got 745 in my mains and I easily qualified for I got the interview call through EWS category. So why, uh, like in that also I had seen one thing, I had observed one thing, that yes, 95% of the toppers says that we should attempt all the questions. Even I believe that. We should try to attempt all the questions. But in case you do not know a single word regarding a question, you can keep, you can prioritize it last. So okay, so this strategy I'll tell you later on. So just now let's go through it. So uh, 140 marks I had left, 745 I got uh, in the mains marks and finally uh, in the final list I missed by 3 marks. 9 not, 8 was the cutoff after reserve list and I had got 9 not 5. So uh, I uh, realized uh, like it was a SOC also and it was good also. SOC why? Because I uh, could not clear it in my first attempt and at that time uh, the situations were very odd. I was hoping for the result and as sir told you I did not prepare for prelims of next because first attempt going till interview it feels very good you know Ki are ya, like in every mode of the exam like in every stage of the exam there has to be a different mode for preparation fine so i was in the interview mode and then all of a sudden i find that oh i have not like uh, made it into the list and on october exam was there august this result had come so i again came back to bangalore i prepared i had some two months in my hand I did whatever I could, but I knew that I will not be able to clear prelims this time. Same thing happened, I could not clear prelims. So that was actually a blessing in disguise because then I would have been trapped into this vicious cycle. Without uh, you know, uh, improving yourself, if we are taking the exam again, then it will not give very good result. That is what I felt. So then I got some gap of 6-7 months. Then uh, for few months, I uh, took classes somewhere to get some income because that was a challenge which has to be handled which had to be handled and then I started again preparing for a 2021 attempt that was from February. So I, I was again uh, staying at Insights only. So uh, February I started and then in May uh, I got, uh, in March I got severe Covid, second wave. So one month was gone but fortunately uh, the exam was postponed, October it came October. So what I am doing right now, I am trying to give you my entire glimpse of 3-4 years. So that you know even in your life there will be moments when you will be feeling very down. There will literally be no one with whom you can share your you know whatever is going in your heart and in your brain. But it's only we, we have to stand you know and we have to talk to ourselves. We have to motivate ourselves. So then uh, Covid came and one more thing, all of us come here with a plan okay. We have plan of let's say 3 years, your parents would have given you, okay, I give you 3 years, you do it, 4 years, 2 years. So we will have this plan. But it may happen that you know things will not work as you would have envisaged before you began this journey. So do not get disheartened and for every plan A, you have plan B and even you have plan C. I will tell you how I, how I had these things and now how I tried to emotionally as well as academically balance myself. Okay, so then uh, Covid came, then Covid happened, then I again went to my home. Fortunately, exam got postponed and this time since it was my third attempt, so I now was a bit practical, okay. 
yes, I wanted to clear UPSC, I wanted to become an IAS, but now I thought that what if I do not make it into this attempt as well, because you all know that this exam is it's becoming competitive day by day. So then I also filled the form for state PCS. I come from Jharkhand, so there is this uh, J JPSC, Jharkhand State Public Service Commission. So I filled the form for this also. Now what happened? So till July, I came to my home, then again because of some medical emergency, I had to go to uh, CMC Velour. So again, I was 15 July, I was in CMC Velour. Now 19 September was the prelims date of my state PCS. Okay, and uh, around October 10th, I guess it was uh, UPSC. So now I had to prepare for both the exams because I could not leave state PCS and UPSC has become so dicey. So, and then also I had to improve because my main score was 745. I was convinced that I need to go till 800 plus. This is something which we need to get to secure us a rank. So then uh, 10, 15 days, uh, one month or one and a half months I got, tried to manage, a lot of things happened in between. Then I gave this prelims in my state, Ranchi. I immediately came back to Bangalore with some 20 days in my hand and I began uh, for prelims. Like before that also I was studying, but uh, hardcore 20 days I got. Then I prepared for this also. Then I attempted the exam here in Bangalore only center. Then results came in both the, both ones I qualified prelims. Then there was a sigh of relief that okay, fine. Matlab, things will go on like it will be, like I was only praying to God, give me one more chance to write mains. Because prelims, like even so many our officer friends are there. Like, you know, this is very uh, dicey prelims. It might be that if you give me uh, next year, I might not be able to clear it. This is a very fact, okay. So then uh, I got chance to write mains. Now you see, uh, mains was my uh, strong point, which I believed, which even uh, when I used to interact with Vinay sir, even he used to tell me. So in first mains, I got uh, 133 in essay. And then like all the uh, papers, one, two, three, four, essay and optional, I got very good marks as I had written. So I had this confidence that mains is fine. Once I get again chance to write mains, I'll not leave it this time. So then came mains. Again, I was uh, at Insights Test Series. I was sitting in this Lay Arabia, we have test center. It was a uh, day of Diwali. I distinctly remember it. It was ethics paper. And I could attempt only 14 questions. Okay. I left six case studies. Okay, I'll not surprise you. I, I'll even upload my paper if you want to see. This is true fact which I'm telling you. I left six case, uh, no, sorry. There are uh, case studies, I think six case studies are there, na? And uh, 130 marks is section A, 120 marks is section 2, yes. So there will be six case studies. Out of the six, I left three case studies. And in 130 marks of paper one, uh, there are 13 questions. I left six, uh, five questions. I mean to say out of 250 marks, I could only attempt around uh, uh, two, uh, 170, 180 marks. That is in uh, uh, Diwali last year, before mains exam, when I was giving mains test series. So then I thought to myself, yeah, last time when I was giving in first attempt, my worst was 16 questions, like leaving around 60 marks I was leaving. I was able to do 16 in test series. Because these things is something which all of you will face at some point in your preparation. You will not be able to finish the paper. You will be leaving, you will be thinking whether I should, you will judge yourself that whether I should take the exam or not. So 16 questions in first attempt. Third attempt, it was going to 14 question. I thought ki instead of uh, like improving, I am like going down. So so uh, on that day, I was very upset. Okay, I couldn't sleep entire night. I was wondering that if this will be my performance, forget any service, uh, I'll not get a rank, forget IS. So then I did lot of, you know, uh, I consoled myself, I motivated myself. And there were nights when I used to, you know, simply, I used to sleep and I used to just uh, uh, scribble with my hand on my bed entire night, just to, you know, uh, get myself very fluid with the writing practice because it had been one year. And again, I would like to tell you one thing, never leave writing practice in this exam, even if like, Particularly when you are writing mains uh, or even in during prelims, try to write at least one page, something, any answer or anything, just that touch should not be left. Otherwise, a person who is writing mains in 2019 September and again writing mains uh, uh, test series in 2021 November, it was like completely new, like I was feeling, uh, uh, there were a lot of problems which I was facing. 
so i felt that this should not be done like should keep on practicing that touch should not be like you know uh, kept apart so this happened and then uh, finally uh, mains uh, actual mains came in january uh, essay essay paper you all know this time what was like the essay one so uh, by god's grace and by uh, other factors i was good in i am good in philosophical essays so but still when i came after the exam hall i was very confused like ki whatever i have written like is it very because it was a very open ended question very broad uh, interpretation so i was feeling that whether i have done justice with the paper or not because in 2019 i was feeling very happy uh, happy after the paper but in this time i was clueless then uh, somehow because other day you have gs1 and gs2 you cannot afford to think on the paper which has already passed so for 30 minutes 40 minutes i pondered then i left it i came for the another day gs1 to i attempted all questions gs1 all questions done gs2 all questions done and before this i'll tell you during my entire preparation the only gs which i feared the most was gs1 but in both the exams in uh, first mains and in second mains i got very good marks in gs1 so again there is no direct correlation between the papers in which you feel scary and the marks which will you will be getting in your actual upsc exam so then uh, gs2 also i attempted all the questions both the exams were very good i was very happy after that paper then came gs3 and gs4 even this time gs3 i left 30 marks question question number 1 uh, gdp question number 2 s400 question number 3 uh, who some uh, uh, some index air air quality ranking some index was there some findings were there i left them 30 marks i left gs3 because i did not know anything and in gdp i was writing scribbling something by that time paper like time was up so 30 marks i left then gs4 even this time i left uh, 10, uh, 20 marks like two 10 marker i left so 50 marks i had left even this time being very frank then uh, optional now i knew but you you see when i left these 50 marks on day 3 of my upsc mains exam uh, then there are there is five days gap isn't it so now you have optional paper 1 paper 2 and your uh, english and hindi or whatever language we take so now my mind was telling that this 50 marks has to be compensated in your optional you need to do in your optional very well otherwise there is no chance that you will be getting good service so then again during optional i got covid third wave again you see again i had a plan ki bhai 5 days 5 days is there i'll read for i'll complete the entire revision of all the like both the optional paper in 3 days and 2 days i'll again uh, practice some pyqs or i'll like uh, whatever added fodder i have i'll do that again i got covid again this plan was reduced from 5 to 3 now my mind was again in the hang state ki are uh, what to do now almost uh, 50% time has been reduced again i reoriented my like a uh, plan and again i did whatever i could do in those 3 days then i came to pay, uh, like exam and even in exam uh, this happened with pubad i don't know uh, regarding other optionals like you see uh, for 15 marker you get 3 pages for 20 marker you get 4 pages for 10 marker you get 2 pages but what i observed in pubad paper 1 i don't know about psir and all and sociology what happened that for 20 marker we were given 3 pages so i felt very happy matlab this is less lengthy na we can complete it i felt so happy wow this time i will be able to complete the paper but everyone will be able to complete it i am not doing anything great so anyways i uh, attempted it i completed the paper uh, paper one of pubad i was very happy because last time i had left 35 25 marks in paper one and 10 marks in paper two in pubad first attempt then came paper two now i was thinking that i will first see how many pages i am getting to write in the uh, question per question in paper to what happened 20 marker then upsc followed its normal norm that is 20 marker 4 pages 15 marker 3 pages this was followed in paper 2 moreover in paper 1 what they did they distributed it like this 15 15 20 so it comes to 50 marks one section will be of 50 marks in optional now what they did 20 20 10 and you see uh, here we have to write three pages here three pages here three pages nine page one block is done here four pages four pages two pages 10 pages so this i saw when we got the paper 
and when i saw the paper i felt it is very easy i know all the questions then i found okay so this time actually we have to write all 50 pages but here three pages it was less i am only telling you because these are the small things which we must keep in mind because what happens now when we get the paper which is easy we get over excited he okay i know everything we can do it like maza a gaya but in that you will miss something because this uh, we have observed that during the exam period that 10 days or 12 days we need to be very very cautious and we need to maintain our calm no matter whatever happens you be at your best if you want to you know uh, do justice with the process so then i saw that uh, paper 2 is lengthy compared to paper 1 but it was easy then i my only target was that from the first minute of the start of the exam that is 2 pm till 5 pm my pen should not stop and i will do justice with each and every question because generally what happens that the last questions which we get we try to do it in very less time 2 minutes 4 minutes 5 minutes so we even if we know the answer we are not able to do justice with that question that is the problem so here i thought this will be my plan and then i began with it i did not i literally did not stop my pen for even a minute and i'm telling it very frankly even at that time i had some cough and all because of covid and it was too cold in ranchi still like i was like almost all our friends in the class they were coughing so it didn't matter anyway so we you know uh, simply i didn't even drank water because drinking water like i'm not telling do it this way i just i'm telling you my strategy not strategy but this is what we had to do actually because i was calculating that if i miss 3 4 minutes i'll be missing some 5 6 lines so this was going in my mind and since you since you see i did not attempt 50 marks in gs 3 and 4 there was a pressure on me that optional i cannot take even the slightest of chance so then i uh, did paper 2 after uh, completing this attempt third attempt i was very uh, there was contentment from within myself that yes this time i have done my best in mains now whatever is the result let's wait for it so then uh, things happened and then interview call i got and uh, this time i uh, the score improved from 745 to 799 so this is uh, 799 or 800 is a good score because even if you score average in interview you will get through the exam that is for sure so then this time also in interview you might have observed that uh, 200s is not very uh, like frequent in number uh, which means that the average marks in interview has declined this time not only this even some of the friends they have gotten double digits in interview so interview is also becoming as dicey as prelims at least in prelims we have two hours and all the aspirants have same set of questions but in interview you have 35 minutes and you know uh, there's a line which uh, i was told by some people that if it's your day in the interview the interviewer will you ask your father's name but if it's not your day they'll ask their father's name <laughs> so so this is the factor which is there in interview okay and that to only 35 minutes in my first attempt uh, after like my interview was on 28th march 20th march uh, some 28th march but before that covid happened and i got lot of time to prepare and i prepared like better than mains i prepared for my interview in my first attempt and after coming from interview i had bs bus research board i felt that had i not prepared a single thing i would have answered it the same manner this was the experience of 2019 i got 160 marks experience was not good i myself called vinay sir i told him that sir it was not good and before that whenever i used to give mock you know uh, uh, i gave uh, so many mocks with vinay sir he used to tell me you will be getting 200 plus then when i told him that sir i got a uh, basi sir's board and, and i narrated him my interview experience he told okay 180 plus but i got 160 so fine this was done this this time i got a board of uh, satyavati ma'am and this time interview i felt it was very good and uh, i gave mock here at vinay sir at insights then uh, other coachings in delhi almost all of them like uh, minimum they were telling me was 180 and maximum was 200 plus again i got same marks 160 so this was a bit you know uh, depressing but anyhow you know at some point you will feel ki kuch to acha nahi hua but overall you have to be you know you have to balance this preparation so you see had i got some 20 marks more i would have been in top 100 top 50 with 193 so still i got 160 which is average this year and because of this score of 799 i could get a good rank and the service of my choice 
so this is the you know preparation journey and ups and downs in brief so now uh, first i would like to begin with the strategy for sa gs 1 2 3 4 and option uh, your uh, uh, interview but before that if you have any doubt or any query you can ask me excuse me sir uh, can you get this clean like what command to given yeah, i want to erase it yeah okay another slide will go no okay fine thank you so uh, do you have any doubt like yeah please so guys you are your best every single year if yes how did you push it that you were best every day yeah so i was not at my best on every single day because after all we all we all are human beings we need some you know uh, refreshment and all so uh, i uh, in my first attempt i used to be like very much dedicated i used to come to library at uh, above village hyper at around 9 or 10 am and i uh, used to be there till 11 pm so uh, in between one hour we'll have some uh, you know uh, some uh, break some power nap some uh, food and all so around 10 to 12 hours i used to study because at that time first of all schedule was very tight like the schedule which you might be getting at insights uh, the classes are very hectic along with you know revising then uh, giving tests it is very hectic hectic so uh, at that time 10 12 hours i used to study and then also never was i used to fill my you know fulfill my targets uh, or get very good score in uh, prelims test series and all so what used to happen is that after some 6 days of this routine i used to take some one day break and on that day i used to sleep to my heart's content okay i used to eat have some good food and i just used to sleep for hours and hours so that from next day i again pull myself back into that cycle so this was there so if you are if on some day you are feeling you know not very much enthusiastic to uh, carry to follow your routine work don't you know burden yourself take it easy it's fine it's not a blunder that you are committing because i remember Uh, in my first attempt uh, during new year uh, my roommate they they told me that let's go for some one or two days you know uh, just uh, celebrate new year just uh, let's go for some uh, scenic place and chill out i went there but after like i i was very calculative ki like two days okay how to adjust these two days <laughs> the moment these two days were was spent na every hour i was thinking what will be i losing and because of that i was not able to enjoy my trip and then they told me that yaar why why we brought you along with us so <laughs> so then i came back and then i gave prelims and i realized that it doesn't matter actually we will be able to you know uh, it it depends on us how we manage it but because of like don't take it don't take pressure like being being anxious is important it's required but we should not you know that should not turn into fear that is important okay so take break relax whenever you feel that the mind is not receptive enough to study whatever you are studying take a break not an issue any other question school life uh, i uh, uh, in 2012 i uh, gave my matric exam so see uh, one one more thing i would like to tell you that fine i i have like from school days i have been a good student but that is not the only criteria to crack this exam even the average if you have average marks if you are not a state topper it doesn't matter if you are not a school topper it doesn't matter so i was my school topper but that is not the criteria to crack this exam it only matters that what i told you let's say you have taken some 3 years time from your parents or from yourself just do justice with these 3 years that's it your past will not at all matter if you are doing justice with your present that is these 3 4 years in which you are preparing so 2012 it was icsc board some 96.4% i had got i was school topper again 2014 i isc intermediate again good marks school topper college also very good it was like i was a uh, branch topper but that is fine that is only you know uh, it encourages that's it it has not it has like it's not the only criteria to crack this exam that's it so anything else any other question my daily routine i told you like i used to come to library by 9 or 10 am so like morning with schedule acha like studying and all 
अच्छा अच्छा ओके फाइन सो हाँ एक्चुअली आई यूज टू अलाइन माई शेड्यूल एज पर दी कोर्स करिकुलम एट इन साइड्स बिकॉज लाइक आई बिलीव दैट वॉट एवर इज बिंग टॉट इन दी क्लास सो बिफोर कमिंग लाइक यू माइट हैव बिन गिवेन सम प्री रीड्स which you have to read and which then you have to come to class ncrts or some standard books so let's say if in class parliament is the uh, topic which will be discussed so before that i used to study about parliament and generally this happens that there will be some subject combinations like this week let's say week x week x will be let's say geography and economics these two will be taught you taught to you so some people what they do if they will pick up one subject they'll end it and then they will pick up another but my strategy was that if i go to let's say attend a geography class before that i should read whatever has been prescribed so that in class if the when the faculty is teaching and if i have some doubt which i think has not been addressed then i can ask him then and there only but let's say if geography has been taught today and this is not fitting your schedule because you have planned that you will be reading it some x day on that x day what you will do today you will attend the class you will take the notes and then when you will be reading you will like keep your notes and keep your textbook at that time if you will be having some problem that becomes little bit of you know it will take more time at that time because that sync will be lost so this was my strategy you can like have your own so whatever was the plan of the class i used to study i used to make my schedule accordingly but i used to have some time for my own like for example optional this has to be given extra time then your newspaper reading then your miscellaneous time which means that let's say in some topic i need to do something extra i want to do something extra or somewhere i need to uh, have some flexibility in my schedule so there should be these division like if i am reading for uh, 10 hours on non class day then i'll divide it like 4 uh, hours whatever has to be taught in class pre reading of that then 2 hours optional 1 and 1/2 hours newspaper and 30 minutes or 1 hour or 1.5 hours miscellaneous uh, for example uh, previous year question paper uh, uh, reading the syllabus these also we will come later on how to like you know uh, make your study very much relative to what the exam demands so this was my daily schedule sir means the number of pages will alter for every year no 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 uh, it, it doesn't alter i don't know why it was like this in 20 uh, 21 when i gave even i was told that in 2020 also it was there like uh, for like you, you see you have to write 50 pages right uh, in in uh, gs also 20 uh, 15 marker 3 pages so 10 3 is a 30 10 2 is a 20 so 50 pages you have to write both in gs as well as in optional but what i found in 2021 that we had to write 47 pages only in paper 1 and again 50 pages in paper 2 so just keep this mind like have this mindset like be very flexible never you go to the upsc exam with any preconceived like you know notion ki bhai aisa hi hoga ya fir this will only happen if the uh, like in prelims if uh, this question is there then if d will be the answer or we can go like this just go there judge the situation like same is with csat also i'll come to that like in my attempt also i used to feel that bhai maths i'll do maths because i'm engineer i'll do maths i'll get sufficient score so that i clear this had but this strategy like upsc is evolving day by day so we also have to evolve day by day fine that is the point so that is with regard to the uh, pages 50 pages has to be your target okay sir what was your prelim strategy sir? i'll come to that i'll will the next session will be regarding that only like prelims mains and interview so anyone else uh, any other question before we begin with that sir apart from your strategy preparation what are the other qualities which can help you to crack see uh, other qualities uh, first is that uh, you have to you know uh, be very frank with yourself you have to be very you know honest with yourself fine every day or if not every day every 3 4 days or every week try to analyze yourself like the like if sumit of yesterday is he better than sum, like is sumit of today better than sumit of yesterday in terms of knowledge you have gained okay in terms of discipline which you have followed for your preparation fine so that is the first incremental self improvement is what i call it okay so incremental self improvement is the first important uh, factor which will help you to clear this exam okay 
Apart from that, you will have to have self belief. Fine. You will have to have self belief. Trust me, there will be multiple times when this will go for a toss. Okay. You will question yourself. Ki yaar, can I, like, will I be able to make it? Like, I think hum, hum se na ho paega. I won't be able to do it. Or you will be doubting yourself. But again, you will have to reaffirm yourself. Fine. Just, you know, and one more thing, uh, what I used to do, I, you know, whenever I like uh, 14 questions, then I used to console myself. And I will tell you one very important thing which all toppers say. You know, uh, sometimes it's, it's very important to have fake confidence. Trust me. Okay, this will help you a lot. Fine. I will tell you how. Uh, in uh, that uh, Diwali time when I could do only 14, I used to tell myself, okay, fine, uh, since it was Diwali and there were some crackers bursting. So, <laughs> my mind, like, I, it, would, it would have got diverted and I could not, you know, uh, concentrate. So, this mind is a very, you know, very uh, important factor which we need to control, fine. Everywhere you will be all toppers, many of us, like, in uh, YouTube you will get, if you will search for book list, you will get n number of sources. Even on my Telegram channel, I have put all these book list and all. But what I believe, like even uh, before coming to this session, I thought that should I prepare, like should I prepare what to speak? But then I thought, no, I will be impromptu. Okay, whatever, like it should be like, you know, uh, a very casual and a very, uh, what to say, impromptu conversation. Like, so therefore, I did not prepare any book list. I did not prepare any specific things. Ki, yes, these things are there. Take it, like uh, do it and you will clear the exam. No prescription. Okay, I'll only talk what happened with me and what happens with every ordinary aspirant out there who wishes to clear this exam so that you believe this, that every ordinary person who is having a dream can clear this exam. Okay, that was, that is my focus of today's session. So, self-belief is one thing. Incremental self-improvement is another thing. Yeah, then fake confidence is also very important. Okay. Uh, for this, you know, uh, why this is important, what happens, this is a human tendency, okay. Like I told you, essay when I gave, I came, you will start judging yourself, you know. You will start judging yourself with the parameters or the benchmarks which you yourself would have set before taking the actual mains exam. Okay, let's say you gave some test series at Insights or at any, any coaching, you got some good marks in essay, 140, 135 and you were very clear that what you wrote, everything made sense. Now when this in actual exam when you will write essay, you will think yaar, whether I have written correct or not, whether it was good or not. And then if you let your brain ponder on this only, this will directly impact your GS 1, 2 and subsequent papers. So this is very difficult to you know manage, balance, very difficult. Even I faced lot of difficulty. At that time I used to give myself fake confidence. Fine. Ki bhai, if you are such a good candidate, you used to get so many uh, like consistently good scores in inside test series in essay or anywhere, then obviously agar, agar if you have uh, like uh, face problem, everyone would have face problem and actually this happens, okay. So then you have to give you fake confidence that all is well, it's fine, let's move to another paper, this would have gone uh, like good, don't ponder too much on this. Same is the case with GS1, GS2, don't judge yourself right after coming from the exam venue, let all the papers finish because anyways after that you will not have any work. You keep on, you know, uh, take one paper, you spend two days, no problem. But during that exam, please do not judge yourself. Even if you are attempting 16 questions, keep calm, have confidence that yes, I will get more marks at, in these 16 questions than if someone will, will get in attempting 20 questions. Have this confidence. Because this actually works, even in my uh, first attempt, GS1, I had attempted 19. Okay. And after this, like uh, these traits, one more is there. Be very observant and be very open to ideas, okay. I will tell you how. In GS1, there was Greco-Bactrian question, question number one in 2019. Uh, Greco-Bactrian uh, aspects of Indian art and ar architecture was asked. The moment I saw this Greco-Bactrian, I was like, yeah, what have they asked? I have never heard this one. What is this? I straight away crossed it. Greco-Bactrian, gone. And then I attempted 19 questions in GS1, 2019. And I got 94 marks. Fine. I had talked to some of my friends. They had attempted full question 20, but still they had got some 92 or 90 marks. So first I got the proof of this fact that it's, it's not necessary that if you attempt all questions, then only you will get good marks or your selection is. Yeah, it is always advis advisable.
to attempt all questions in all papers always advisable if at all you are not able to do it don't get disheartened by that this is what i want to tell you okay and for that this is required fake confidence is required okay then uh, this is done then belief and all then temperament is the another important aspect this will be required right from the day you begin your preparation temperament very important okay how to control or how to you know uh, persuade or dissuade yourself from a particular you know gratification that is important okay this will happen in during exam ye wo, how this happens na for example we will prepare a time table okay so this is my weekly plan this is my monthly plan this is my yearly plan and then we will be having many you know uh, distractions ki yaar theek hai na abhi test if i am not giving it today fine well give it tomorrow i'll give it day after tomorrow so try to stick to your plan as much as possible okay and ideally if you are able to stick to around 80% of your plan you will be succeeding in the exam no problem but it, then it will depend on how exhaustive or how you know uh, engaging is your plan that is also important so make a first of all make a very good plan like for example if uh, now let's say if when there will be 75 days like in 2021 there was very less days for us to uh, uh, at, uh, take the uh, mains exam okay so again what happened is that uh, till prelims i was not very in uh, in full form of studying after prelims result i came in full form then i found that yaar yeah, only 70 days or 75 days are left and so many things are to be done then i made a plan that ev after every two days i'll give one test mains test okay two days one optional then two days one gs one essay essay in this way i made the plan and that plan was very demanding okay but i knew that first let's that is you have you might have read that quote na that if you aim at the sky you land up uh, on the if you aim at rooftop ceiling this, this that quote is there i am not getting it now so we must aim higher okay whatever is our capacity first increase it okay and make the plan according to that okay and then little bit compromise will be fine so that is what 80% target so this is regarding your temperament self belief is there incremental self improvement is there being positive is very important okay try to fill your life with lots of positivity okay uh, uh, when i was preparing till my name came in the interview list in first attempt hardly anyone knew from my near my hometown or my friends that i was preparing this exam so that is regarding positivity have only four five people with you but they should be very positive because anyways from morning till evening you are like being in that lakshmikan that spectrum that and again after that you won't like you will feel ki bhai let let's have some change okay so therefore being positive and having the company of positive people is very very important okay so these are some overall traits which is right required then uh, all, all, obviously that perseverance and all and this will also help you in preparing for your interview where uh, you will be anything they can ask so we used to prepare even these qualities as well so, like uh, any quality then when was the instance when i displayed that quality and how it helped me this will even help you in scoring good marks in ethics yeah uh, the, from this i remembered uh, in first attempt i had literally zero subjective knowledge of ethics okay like ethics as a subject it has to be read as a you know as an academic subject there's a way to read it i only realized it after giving my first attempt because in my first attempt after giving the paper i wondered nowhere i have i used any thinkers i uh, hardly i used one or two thinkers no terms nothing and but yes i had given lot of examples and these examples came from daily life observations okay i have my own uh, notebook where you know from the school days till today whatever things have been happening around me i try to make example list of that and i used to quote it in my actual exam this helped me a lot i had uh, scored 114 in uh, 2019 which is an average score but this was only with the help of these examples no keywords no academic content it was not there so any opportunity if you get to collect examples from newspaper or from your own life never miss that opportunity make a database of that and use it in the exam this will give you an edge you know in getting good marks so this was it so now we will begin with a uh, prelims mains and uh, interview so i'll be very uh, brief here because anyways you might be getting lot of you know uh, inputs how to like uh, perform good in prelims in mains in interview so mains was my like very strong area which i believe so i'll spend more time on that 
prelims very humbly i would accept that i was i am not a very master of prelims still for csat i would like to tell you something for gs you might be aware that you know uh, you might be knowing that there are some set of books which has to be read like some ncrts already you would have got that book list from insights so ncrts are there then some standard books are there you might be aware of this you can read any paper the hindu or the indian express but yes uh, try to be aware with last at least 3 years 2 to 3 years current affairs okay and post this whatever important issue has been in news just have some pointers on that that's it because you see uh, in uh, 2021 they asked about sport, they asked about 14 finance commission by 15 finance commission came in around 2016 now that will now it's the time for 16 finance commission they have got interim extension because of covid who will remember 14 finance commission that too in that much detail to write a 10 to 15 marks answer so this is again checking of temperament okay so that is there but if we remember only 3 to 4 points okay like uh, overall devolution was increased so then again some things were there i remembered at that time 3 4 points i wrote it you will get good marks so what i want to say you is that topics which have been in recent occurrence let's say last 2 3 years have good grip on them okay but whatever has been happening beyond these 3 years let's say 5 years or even 10 years if it has been some major issue let's only have you 7 to 8 keywords and points on that this will help you to be at safe side both in prelims as well as in mains okay and uh, what my my strategy used to be i used to follow 80 to 80 principle okay i'll at 80 has to be my average attempt number of questions i'll attempt 80% has to be the accuracy which means 64 so if 64 is correct 16 is wrong you will never flunk in prelims this was my strategy but yes again this will not always work based on the length of the paper that is how lengthy it is and based on you know uh, the weird questions which they put this will be going plus minus 5 75 85 this was my range but again this is very personal there are aspirants who attempt all 100 questions and some of them even clear it some of them don't clear it there are some people i know personally 68 question he cleared prelims he only attempted 68 questions so this happens this is personally individual experience therefore the most important part is give at least 35 to 40 tests this is very important okay if you will not give very high chance we will not be able to make it happened with me so this is the ideal number of test why because the more test you will give you will be able to figure out what is the best you know approach for you to take in the exam okay so this is there then previous year question paper again this is a great mantra for both prelims as well as mains take it very seriously uh pyqs plus syllabus okay this has to be your uh this has to be at your tip okay after my first attempt when i was taking class with some coaching i realized like i was analyzing pyqs for the class i realized that i had missed the best part of my preparation and therefore like i could not clear the like i could not get very good marks in mains when you will analyze the pyqs you will definitely find there's a you know there's a theme or there's a there's a way upsc ask ask question and you will see that never any coaching any test series will be exactly replica of the pyqs it can never be so always keep this in mind let's say you have done topic of okay one uh, demo i'll give you regarding note making so before that let's say you uh, read about women empowerment okay so when you have read about women empowerment in your gs1 try to go to pyqs and see what type of questions have they asked in women empowerment then go with the syllabus what syllabus mentions about women empowerment and this has to be cross paper not only gs1 do not restrict it to gs1 see if in gs2 let's say vulnerable sections link it with gs1 where we have a uh, women regarding topic in indian society okay so gs2 will be linked similarly in gs4 you see what topics you can link to gs4 fine in women empowerment so if women is a pivot every aspect which can be thought with regard to women empowerment or women upliftment okay that has to be done in a holistic manner and that idea you will be getting in when you analyze it with respect to syllabus and previous year question papers in uh, 2019 or 21 2019 i guess there was some question which otherwise we read in gs3 but that was asked in gs1 so that shows that inter paper linkage is also very important when we prepare notes on any topic for this exam okay so uh, that this is what pyqs and syllabus for both prelims and mains so 
some few days before prelims as even uh, Vinay sir would be telling you that we should be only solving PYQs so that we get into that mode of UPSC, okay. So do this like 35 to 40 mock tests you take and then at least minimum 10 years paper PYQs, minimum 10 years PYQs you solve. So these things uh, then reading on newspaper either the Hindu or the Indian Express, these things uh, uh, focusing on these, yes, be very good with your basics, okay. This is something which uh, people take lightly, but this is very important, okay. You must be able to read between the lines of your NCRTs or your Spectrum or your Sankar, okay. Because uh, if you are very good with your basics, okay, you will be able to get, you know, around 75 marks in your prelims paper, 70 to 75, if you are good with your basics. Then comes the game of, you know, getting that 25 marks, okay. So for this, I will give you a very brief thing. Let us say there are 100 questions, fine. Now, if paper is tough, if paper is easy, okay. So first of all, how we figure out, because in examination hall anyways, you won't be able to figure out unless we come from the exam hall, then next starts that uh, festival of cutoff prediction, all those things, then you will figure out a paper was tough, therefore I also felt it tough. But at that time you will not uh, talk to your uh, next person, Na, ki bhai, tu, how are you feeling, I am feeling very tough. So how that will, uh, how you can figure out that, I will just give you a very brief of it, okay. Because I had committed this mistake in 2020, okay. Even after coming from, uh, in room when I was like going through it, I, I could easily clear it, but I messed it up in 2020, so I will tell you. See, in the first five minutes, na, first five minutes, try to just go through the paper, okay. Just flip from first page to last page, so that you can see that what, like, that will be the first look, whether paper is lengthy or you are finding some keywords which you have never heard of, okay. If those things are more, it implies that paper is relatively on the tougher side, okay. But if you, in that glimpse of five minutes, if you find that, you know, there are terms which you have heard, which you have read, which means paper is on the easy side. Now, the moment in the first five minutes you get a feel of that, your mind will be prepared to spend the next one hour, 55 minutes with the same mindset, okay. What happened in 2020? I got the paper, I began from first page, okay. Chalo karte hai, like, okay, coming, questions are coming, doing. And it was lengthy in the start. I felt paper SI yoga, like it would be same. And then later on, I found that the second half of the paper, it had easy questions I, and I messed it up. Why? Because I spent proportionately more time in the first half. Second time I had less, a uh, second half I had less time and I committed mistake in silly questions. So that is the problem. First five minutes, go through the paper, then prepare your strategy. How it works? Uh, like tough and easy. Now you see, let's say we have round one. Okay. Round one, round two. These two rounds are compulsory. Round third is it at your own discretion. Round one, what I used to do? First, attempt those questions in which you are very sure. Yes, I know this. Okay. Now, from one to hundred, in first round, if you are able to solve around 40 questions, means paper is moderate, it is not very tough, 40 you are able to do it, okay. Then the questions in which you have 50-50 chance, okay, you know two options, you do not know the re remaining two, just circle it, circle it, star, anything which you want, that is you will see it in the round two. Now there will be, you, you have to see, okay, that how many questions are there in which you are you know, sticking to this 50-50, let us say it is 30 questions, okay. So then you are saying, uh, and in this 30, if you go by probability, if you uh, solve it 15 correct, 15 incorrect. So 30 and uh, minus 10. So 20 marks you are gaining, 80 marks from 40, 100. So this is good. Now even if it is moderate paper, difficulty level, 100 cutoff is fine, you will be clearing the cutoff. But again the game will change when it is tough. How you will figure out tough? When question, like in Hindi we say ki jab question hill nahi raha, matlab when you are not able to, you know, solve it, then it will be tough, okay. So we need not get frightened or scared at that time. If it is tough, it will be tough for everyone. Same applies to mains exam as well, okay. So then, now you see, if only 30 you know, okay, 30 you know very well. Uske baad, after that you don't, like you have to think. Come to round 2, see how many you know. Let us say you know here 30, so 60. 
then see those questions when you where you know at least one it will be 10 or 15 but this is very last take it as a last you know because here probability of getting correct will be only 33 percent and incorrect will be 67 percent so this is a high end game but this is the area where which decides where you are writing means or not very important and this question whether you will be knowing 30 or you will be knowing 40 will depend on your basics okay which i which we talked in initially that whatever book you are reading each and every thing which has been dealt in that material you should be very well aware of that every minute details okay so that is important so if that is done these 30 40 questions are going nowhere and once you you know get good marks good get good hold let's say you only get 30 correct it was a tough paper okay but all your basics are correct economics polity geography uh, then your uh, science and tech basics it's correct you will be getting 60 marks and let's say 30 let's remove, uh, reduce it to 25 okay because it's a tough paper so 25 questions you know 50 50 okay so 13 correct let's say 12 incorrect so 26 and 8 minus 8 so it will be around uh, 16 or 18 18 marks 60 plus 18 so it goes to 78 and then you see that where can I go for some three four more questions so that I land up around 90 okay if 90 is the score you are landing up with full accuracy then even in tough paper you will be able to because anyways we have seen 2021 even 2020 it's going around 80s cutoff is in 80s if you are getting in 90s then it is fine so that marks number of attempts and your uh, overall cutoff it will depend on the relativity of the paper whether it's a tough paper whether it's an easy paper tough or easy will again depend on the number of questions which you are able to tackle in your round one and subsequently in round two you will see I, I, I had felt it in easy paper I was automatically able to solve 80 questions in difficult paper 60 after 65 I was searching what else we need to do it so we need not worry about that so this was with respect to prelims of GS okay coming to CSAT uh, this is now becoming the new you know uh, differentiator or uh, destroyer of the dreams so in 2019 uh, I had the background of uh, uh, BTEC so I felt uh, uh, math is very good and I am from ICSE background so my English was good so I felt proud that okay maths I'll do it English I'll do it who cares like uh, she said so I'll never prepare and frankly I did not prepare in 2019 just two days before I just solved PYQs of 2018 and 2017 because 2016 CSAT was easy so I went in the exam now when I was I started with English this happens with almost everyone because a part a b c here I will spend some five ten minutes because I think this is very important nowadays okay and I think that uh, this strategy actually worked for me in three attempts and I feel that this can be you know uh, something you will learn from this uh, let's say this is maths this is reasoning this is English 30 questions 25 questions 25 questions now this since this is a CSAT I will purely try to uh, put my point on the basis of facts and calculations nothing you know uh, uh, very dicey in this you will easily understand it this is the math since he said actually how to clear it even if you know nothing in this so 80 questions this is the breakup it will be you can like just just uh, just oppose this this can be 30 25 anything like that now what people generally do there will be three category of people like for us from engineering background we will think maths is the best is either Karlena we will do it and we will clear the exam people from humanities they will think English or this will be their like uh, strength area and then people in between they will be having reasoning as their strength area now what happened in 2019 I started with English because English and maths was my strength I began I, I was uh, reading the passage when coming to answers I felt all the options are same <laughs> Then I thought I have done my 10th and 12th from ICSE background, 92 was my score. How come I am not able to solve English passage? I took it at, at my ego, okay. And then I, okay, fine, this is okay, next I'll do it. Again, same problem, okay, next I'll do it. This happened, entire English like was over, time was over. And then I wondered, I'll not be able to clear CSAT in this way. 
then i came to maths by god's grace at that time like na 2019 maths was okay so here i then again like solved it my accuracy was very good i had attempted hardly 40 questions in total like uh, maths english and reasoning and all and in maths uh, out of let's say 30 i got some 27 correct okay so this saved me this was about to drown me okay then i realized ki this is not how we should tackle csat that if english is my strength this will help me no do not fall into this 2020 i gave 2020 csat i believe it was not tougher than 2019 because i could easily like uh, clear it against 2020 then came 2021 which was my life's like worst csat which i ever gave it gave me nightmares because i after the exam i decided that this time if i don't clear it i'll definitely read csat okay so even in 2021 i did not read csat i just two days before i did the same thing last three years paper so then in 2021 what happened maths in maths you would have seen that the pattern is they have changed it earlier what used to happen you solve the question you will get an answer you will find it in the option mark it done this time in 2021 even if you come to the answer again in question they are twi- like in the options they are twisting it again that is creating a problem like a doubt whether this is correct or this is correct so this this did not happen earlier in upsc but this time in 2021 maths they did it so uh, in 2021 i began with maths why because prior experience that 27 was correct so i thought now this is my zone i'll begin with this english was sidelined i began with maths okay i kept on doing it now the problem is that in csat what happens is we are not able to have that time with us okay you remember you only have 2 hours what problem happens once you enter into a particular subject let's say maths you you it traps you okay you think that you are after solving this much like let's say there's a paragraph on maths or reasoning and there are three four four questions now you see that we have solved this like little bit more if i'm do, able to do it i'll be solving four questions that comes to our mind and then we are not able to come back this happened with me while i was doing maths and reasoning after doing these i found that one hour and 1.5 hours has gone and i have only done maths and reasoning that too i am not very sure regarding my accuracy fine i had done something around you know uh, around 35 questions and i was hardly sure of you know 25 questions 25 to 28 questions and then that was the first time in my life when i literally felt you know like giving up okay my like uh, i simply had a dry mouth and like that was the first nightmare like never i feared from the exam again i am discussing it so that you know whenever you feel like a problem remember this session okay that this is also possible 30 minutes remained i was in the state of complete panic okay i was moving on my uh, seat i was searching for water bottle i was completely like you see na 25 28 do you think you will be able to clear csat with this 30 minutes left english was untouched now i thought again i told myself okay no problem 30 minutes is still there you can do it okay then i took this english what i did i only solved 10 questions okay and believe me to my surprise all 10 were correct so this went to 38 and i cleared csat all 10 questions were correct not a single question was incorrect 10 out of 10 was my english accuracy even i was wondering how come this happened <laughs> fine <laughs> so this this 30 minute was something which because of this today i am i yes otherwise i would have again writing prelims this is a very reality which i am telling you this is the reality okay 30 minutes changed the entire game of csat now what i learned from this let me tell you very very important okay very important so c a b and c that is maths reasoning and english okay some all of you will have one out of these three as your strength area no problem be like let that be 120 uh, 120 minutes distribute it 40 plus 40 plus 40 okay this i am telling you just to hedge your risk and to maintain your calmness because it is not necessary that everyone will be lucky that in 30 minutes we will solve 10 questions and all will be correct it is not po- like it's very difficult actually so if maths is your let's say first like best you are best in maths you are second best in uh, best in reasoning you are third best in english what i observed or let 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 my belief be put aside you yourself do one thing when you go to your you know our uh, rooms you uh, 
bring out, uh, put out the paper of 2022, CSAT 21, 20 and 19, only four years. You go through it. You will find one thing, okay. There are 10 questions which are easy in all the sections. Just go through it. Definitely you will find this. 10 questions will be there from all the sections which will be very easy. What problem happens is that in those two hours, we are not able to give our time evenly going through all the 80 questions. That is the problem, okay. Don't fall in that. Therefore, you know, uh, just give the time. 40 minutes I'll give to maths, 40 to reasoning, 40 to English. I will tell you how to, you know, uh, manage it later on. Now, you, since you are giving 40 minutes and since I'm assuming, see, first of all, though, leave all the maths aside. Only if you do these 30 questions, 30 into 2.5, 75. CSAT is done, it's that simple, okay. What we need to do is only identify those 10 questions. Why, I'll tell you why I, uh, out of 10 questions in English which I did, why all 10 were correct, there's a reason. I did not, you won't believe, okay, if I'll show you my uh, like question paper, there were many questions this time in 2021, I read the entire passage, okay. But then I did not, like I read the entire passage four, four times, five times. But when seeing the answer, I was not very sure, I left it. I did not take it on my ego that since I've spent five minutes, I must do the answer. No, don't fall into that trap. So this is what I did. I read all the questions, but I did only 10 questions in which I was very sure because one question wrong, I was out of the race. Forget the rank. So this happens. So first prescription is this. Like I will tell you, don't do this exercise in exam. First you do it in your home. See if it works. Try to identify only 10, 10 questions. There will be easy questions in all sections. Only if you identify them, do them. 75 marks, C set is clear. Let's say one will be wrong in each. 27 correct, 3 incorrect. I think still you are, uh, no, I think 28 is minimum we require. 28 and 2. So even if you identify all 30 questions, easy ones, do it, you will clear the C set. Okay. But this is not advised anyhow. We need to do at least, I believe is 40 to 50 is somewhere the safe side to like uh, clear C set minimum. So there are people who are scoring 115 CSAT. So they are gem actually. So now uh, 40. So now see, since this is your easy, uh, like strength area, I'm t talking for example, 10 you have to do the easy ones. Then in those 40 minutes which you have allotted, see how many more you can do it, okay. Since this is your easy area, you, you should be able to do out of 30, 30, 25 and 25. Out of 30, 10 you have done. 20 remains, at least you should do 15, okay, 25 done, okay, 25 done, come to this one reasoning, let's say this is your second best, okay, now 10 you have to do it, since it is second best, I will tell you only 10, you see I am giving very simple targets, this is not very, very hard, okay, 40 minutes, 20 questions, 10 easy, 10 difficult, like moderate, so 20 questions, okay, come to this, you solve 10, uh, third, don't solve any, leave it, you do only 10, no problem at all, 20, 20, 10, 55, Hana? okay, let me uh, reduce your burden more, you do it 5 only, sorry this is, you do it 5, it will come to 50, still it's safe, T I'll tell you how, 10, 10, 10, 30 easy questions, let's say in that 30, you are getting 27, remember these 30 will be the easiest, so accuracy must be there, still I am considering 90% accuracy, 27, Correct. Out of 30. How many remains? 20. But you see in this 20, your 15 is your strong area. Since, you, since this is your strong area, I believe out of 15, at least 10 should be correct. Okay. So then you add 10 to it. Okay. Then this comes 5. Let's say 3 is correct. Add 3 to it. Now you uh, do the maths. 40. You attempted 50. 40 out of 50. No one can stop you from clearing CZ. This is the maths, okay. This is the simple maths. Try it in your test series or in your room. And if you feel like you can go with this strategy, because this is what I found that, you know, uh, this hedging has to be done because we cannot rely on, you know, any one or two aspect. We have to, and there will be some low hanging fruits in both the three areas. First, just simply pluck those low hanging fruits, then maximize your score in your strength areas. Any two out of three. CSAT is done. Apart from this strategy, you can take coaching, you can refer RS Agrawal and all. I never did, did, did those, but it depends on individual's preference. 
so this was csat okay so prelims is done so just i'll have some water we'll talk about mains for few minutes prelims any doubt anyone is having prelims any doubt okay so we'll move to mains uh, mains i'll be uh, uh, very short in mains uh, i say gs and optional so in this again uh, when we come to sa i had uh, fortunately i had good score in sa or uh, in uh, mock also and in actual exam also so here uh, when it comes to philosophical uh, pestel you might be knowing everyone knows pestel okay so it's nothing uh, like it's fine you follow this only okay whatever modifications which you can do at your own end is appreciated but it's not compulsory i added some more to it that is ais ghar simply to remember okay this has no meaning only this has meaning okay so like when i'll talk about dimensions this will help in your gs answers also okay political economic social technological environmental legal all of you know then this will be uh, international angle ah yeah in international individual this will be cultural angle this will be uh, uh, economical angle or the other one i am forgetting now this will be geographical angle then there is one administrative or institutional angle so you can put it in this only what i mean to say is that at any point of time at least 10 dimensions should always be there how this benefits is na for example let's say there is a gs question and you are struggling to put it in a proper structure this will help you if you have dimensions and you have enough content you can think on these dimensions line and you can write the answer that is the point now writing essay what i used to do 3 hours 30 minutes each for structuring of both the both the essays 1 hour each for writing this was my strategy you can follow your own strategy no problem but when you write okay ha huh, i'll give you the example of this year's essay only so this there was this question hand that holds the cradle or rocks the cradle rules the world okay that cradle question so what i did in this and what some friends who could not qualify did in this i'll tell you uh what is the first point which comes to your mind when you read this hand that holds the cradle rules the world anyone women and mother anyone else something more can you think of it any other angle see this is an exercise we will do we are doing here so women and mother this is the thing which came to your mind when you read this question hand that holds the cradle rules the world any other dimension what like give me some example women and mother is there uh, anything else okay yes nature is one example one dimension uh, anything else which you can think of ha huh? rulers rulers okay rulers see what we are doing here na we are trying to think how to it's important to learn how to think this is important in essay this is what i'm trying to do it right now apart from it rulers anything else please please how do you relate, relate it to the topic second part of rocks the world okay uh, gender equality right Mm-hmm. Okay, so we can uh, relate it this with political empowerment, or let's say, like she was also a political figure, and then she took the responsibility of both her career as well as her child. We can do it here. I want to uh, focus on like, see, one core aspect we have figured out that is women and mother, hand that holds the cradle. Okay, let me put you a question. Can you imagine, apart from mother, can there be anyone else who can hold the cradle? Is it not possible? ha huh? no no like okay what if a child is having no mother father we can put father right it can be you know uh, this time uh, there's a there's a very you know uh, goose like the story we we heard during uh, one of our felicitation event one friend is there uh, he is ifs right now 
you know he gave an example like he told about his journey how his father you know uh, you know uh, held the cradle and now he is ruling the world like let's say now he has become the ifs the entire story was about his father we literally had goosebumps so father can also hold the cradle what if a child is you know uh, orphan who will hold the cradle in this case society society state right we have cara we have adoption so you see these are the angles do not restrict it only to women mother and women empowerment because see it's only one line is written hand that holds the cradle rules the world now this is a philosophical essay open ended essay you are free to have multiple interpretations at multiple level for such questions okay uh, let the horses of your mind run as wide as possible if you want to score good marks in your essay so hand that holds the cradle first part okay first uh, wait i'll write it so that i'll tell you how to distribute it okay how to write the essay <coughs> fine so this was the essay hand that holds the cradle this is the first part and rules the world is the second part first part i will we will try to find the multiple dimensions apart from women and mother there can be a father there can be the state there can be the orphanages okay then there can be other family members because not every orphan you know has to go to state even his like let's say uh, uncle or aunt even they take care of, as uh, someone said society and family so family can also be one hand mother can be there father can be there state can be there so these are the multiple dimensions which we can figure out then you in the body then you talk about each of them and in that way it will reflect that you are not only adhering to women empowerment and motherhood you are going beyond that okay now you see if state is there state is holding the cradle now it becomes the role of state to see that the shelter homes or the orphanages they are regulated okay the child there they get best education best uh, healthcare systems uh, th those things are there then as a state how it can regulate better to 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 mention to ensure that the nurturing of the child takes place in the best environment the moment you will explore this topic multiple things will come okay how the state plays as cara how state brings laws in terms of you know posco act or in terms of uh, child protection schemes schemes for vulnerable sections so these multiple dimensions you will be able to explore and you will be able to write in the essay the moment you think in this manner it will be very easy to write a 1200 or a 1000 word or 1500 word essay so this was in this earlier even when i saw it uh, in the exam so first so this time uh, when we saw the essay for first 5 minutes our mind was out ki yaar better you tell us we will become that was spiritual guru why do you want us to become is such high philosophies okay so then you would, uh, would have seen that one uh, that question with regard to wantlessness is utopia while materialism is chimera i have like little bit i know english but when i saw that word chimera i was like ye what is this then i went to the english word it was maya so then i figured acha ho oh, fine they could have written illusion we could have understood it anyways so then i attempted this this essay and i took then that is what uh, exploring the dimensions then uh, trying to have a balance between examples and analysis fine what happens is that many aspirants they they'll give lot of examples but it will be like you know it will be looking like a gs answer but lengthened form that should not be there there has to be analysis i'll tell you how again i'll give you a very interesting example for this uh, that question uh, materialism is uh, wantlessness is utopia and materialism is chimera here what i did see uh, first in uh, wantlessness is utopia for this i uh, wrote a line that swami vivekananda had told that you cannot teach hunger uh, you cannot teach religion to a hungry hungry man so even uh, abraham maslow's need hierarchy theory says okay that we have some basic needs then it uh, goes in the order okay so which proves that unless you fulfill the basic needs that is the you know uh, bread and butter and the cloth and some res residence people will not understand what is democracy people will first they want to have some food then they will understand what we are teaching in the class right now if some of you would have been feeling hungry you will feel ki bhai when will he end his session i'll go to have food 
this is the fact isn't it so that is very true so i gave i wrote in intro first that line then there was this second line that uh, wantlessness uh, want uh, materialism is chimera so for this what i did uh, there is a story by leo tolstoy how much land does a man need okay there he talks about there you know there was a farmer who was told that by a genie that uh, the amount of acre of land which you will be covering on your foot from sunrise to sunset the only condition is you have to come back now what he does he goes on covering some more some more land i'll take and by the time he comes back he dies and he reaches the spot but he dies and then he is buried in some two cents of land so that is the amount of land a person requires so they ask philosophy i gave them philosophy uh, through this uh, this uh, story is very good actually so uh, this was my intro part first part i uh, first intro i justified the first part second para i justified the second part and then i tried to knit both the parts i said that there has to be a balance okay we should not go towards want uh, wantlessness because that is impractical and if this greed or this materialism will not stop that will ruin us so in this way i tried to give them an analysis and then i began with the dimensions of the essay so may I, like keep this point in mind that there has to be analysis and then there has to be example there has to be balance between both these aspects in essay this is not applicable in gs but in essay so in this way and uh, these things you might have been taught that paragraph has to be you know short paragraphs indentation and all i will not talk about them so in this way you have to uh, go by the essay and that is the main crux uh, try to identify as much dimensions as possible and for that most important is your 30 minutes i used to find many people the moment they get the paper you believe me for the first one hour i don't like i don't start writing and i see by the time i start the first page of my essay some uh, people they would have written uh, like they are around to complete one essay but i i was okay fine so give time to this like structuring part that is you know the uh, the layout which you create the rough work for your essay that is very important every time you know that will help you to be in the flow what happens we tend to write something more we tend to deviate from the topic so every time come to your layout and see whether you are addressing the points accordingly or not i used to do like this uh, let's say this is intro i'll simply write like uh, i'll write this i'll write this just keywords okay and then this will be body and then uh, first dimension i will be using this i will be linking this with this then this will be the body part 2 i'll link this with this this way ekdam clumsy diagram used to be there in my back and more often after writing every two pages i used to turn back to this and i used to see whether i am adhering to what i had decided yes but when you will decide this has to be the best like give time 30 minutes decide it very properly and go with the flow never will you risk getting low marks in essay at least so this is uh, something where i have performed consistently good so i gave little bit uh, you know dealing in this one so then uh, essay is done and after this we have a uh, gs so gs first i'll just give you 5 minutes note making because this is what i learned after my first attempt in first attempt i was the receiver okay without any discretionary power whatever you give me i'll study it if my mind is able to process i'll go and write it means i did not had my own discretionary power to differentiate i'll read this i'll not read this this was not there after the mains exam i realized ki what i studied what i did it was un disorganized no no synchronization no mechanism nothing i just read gave test went to exam i got marks but this time what i did after my mains uh, second mains during my second mains before that first thing i did i uh, brought and stick this syllabus in front of me okay i began with gs1 this time my target was you know one very good thing which i have observed if only you remember the syllabus na i i bet i guarantee you you give me some question right now i will do this exercise if you want if you learn the syllabus properly na you will be able to tackle any question trust me fine just first thing you do do is learn the syllabus the mo the point wise they have given that syllabus has to be learned the first important point okay once that is done your notes should be based on syllabus okay your notes should not be based on the uh, coaching material which you are getting yeah that is a very good supplement but ultimately you are 
writing for UPSC syllabus exam. Okay, the exam is on for this syllabus. So what I used to do this time, I will always go by syllabus while studying also while making notes also. Because of this, what happens is a mind map is created in front of you. Okay, you can link every point of one topic to the point in another topic. This is the point. Okay. Now coming to note making, let's say uh, we have separation of powers. Okay. Leave this. So separation of powers. So can anyone tell me that uh, if you make, if you would have made notes, so what will you, what are the points which you will keep in this, or how will you make a smart note like a uh, not very lengthy and not very uh, naive, but a good one. Like what things we will inc include in this? Okay. Apart from that, cooperative federalism. Then, yes, articles with respect to them. Uh, anything else? Commission reports. Anything else? Judgments. Yes, correct. So this is the thing like which you all have told. See, uh, there will be two things. Okay, uh, there will be a ten marker question. There will be a fifteen marker question. Fine. Here, intro, conclusion. Around two marks you get. Body. This is also. I'm just telling. I don't know actually, but this might be the logic actually. So body around eight, like eight marks. Everyone knows that will not get ten out of ten. We need to get seven out of ten to be like no to top this exam. Or get good good rank. So, so you see, one intro, a conclusion, two marks done. Body five marks. Five unique points should be there. Okay. So for ten marker, how to use the notes for ten marker and fifteen marker? Make you know uh, five points is required in this, and around nine points is required in this. Nine to ten points, which boils down to the fact that on any topic you need to have at least. 10 points okay minimum 10 points apart from that if that topic will have some other sub topic then you have to have some more points for that so this is the point now when you prepare for sop as you told me so separation of powers let's say montesquieu gave the concept then article 50 all of us know so try to remember some more articles like 122 or 212 okay like uh, super, like court cannot uh, discuss like uh, about the legislature or the legislatures cannot discuss the conduct of the judge unless there is an impeachment motion. These things are there. So article, what article is there? Try to remember that. Apart from article 50, if you can remember some 3 to 4 articles extra, that will help you. Okay. Then Supreme Court judgments, some, some examples like uh, in SOP, whatever will be the examples. So those can be adhered to. Then case studies will be there if there is some case study. Then uh, your articles is done. Then uh, we, when we talk about let's say contempt of court, then similarly like let's say there is there will be civil, there will be criminal. Okay. Then uh, the article article 170 or I am forgetting right now because after result I have never opened my notes. <laughs> so uh, article was there. Then Arundhati Roy case was there. Some more cases were there. Okay. Then how this contempt of court is related to separation of uh, powers? Yes. There, there is an angle to this, okay. Then uh, how you know, like uh, then again in this there will be uh, judicial overreach, judicial uh, adventurism or whatever we talk about, okay. So lot of things can be related and whenever you read newspapers, okay. So like uh, how we used to made no make notes, earlier what we used to do, editorial came, read, underlined. Uh, first it was copying and pasting, this was first attempt. Then we figured out that anyhow during last time, Notes should be such that in two hours or in one day, you should be able to revise it. Okay. So then I figured out that only things which are extra, which you did not get from anywhere else, only take that keyword and add it into this SOP note which you have. And before this, there are many topics on which notes are already available. Okay, by toppers. Use that and do not try to reinvent the wheel. Okay. And uh, the areas like. Uh, uh, there is a topic contribution of eminent scientists towards development in India. There is a topic in GS3. So there I made some notes regarding you know uh, some 15-20 uh, scientists including women scientists because that generally you will not get anywhere else. Because you remember 2019 there was a question on contribution of uh, MS Swaminathan and M Vishwasarya in uh, you know science and tech field of India. So uh, from that from that I like uh, realized you know every topic of GS has to be 
there has to be a note now it's not humanly possible to make notes for all the topics so around 70 65 to 70 percent notes you will get okay toppers will put their notes fine coaching will give you notes okay so just do what try to highlight the uh, underline only the important keywords which you need to remember if there is sop i must be able to remember some 10 points if there is ofspa i need to remember some 10 points let's say justice verma committee report said something section 3 of the ofspa act mentions about uh, the how to like you know go with the act then there are some guidelines for army some uh, then uh, the supreme court has told how to use the power by the state the states which are under ofspa we made a diagram we will be representing it so this has to be done any topic i give you right now some 10 points immediately should strike you if this is there you will be able to you know attempt the questions in the exam like all 20 or 19 this was the uh, strategy my strategy and in uh, like uh, in 2021 in 2020 2019 despite having pubad i scored 82 in gs2 which was not good average score this time i fortunately scored 115 which is a good score okay similarly in uh, gs1 in first attempt 94 this time 103 gs3 uh, good jump 73 this time 94 or 92 i guess 92 yes and this is after leaving three questions 30 marks then gs4 114 was earlier and uh, this time 103 this is because this time this this year 162 was the highest this year like paper was little bit tougher so this is okay score not bad so this was my score so what i did in these two paper i'll tell you that gs1 though i got good marks in both time in gs2 i realized you know that uh, when there's a paper like let's say when there's a polity try to be try to associate your answer with the demand of the subject when i tell polity use articles heavily okay i was uh, afraid scared in the exam because i thought he uh, let this notion do not percolate to the examiner that i am trying to show off my knowledge because this time what i did i made a list of all the important articles right from dpsp uh, fundamental rights then everyone like even if there's a question on governor i'll use minimum two to three articles this is what i did this time so i was afraid also ki as a now ki, you know you'll feel ki he's showing off too much but it did not happen i got good marks so which i conclude that talk in terms of articles as far as possible talk in terms of supreme court cases or judgments talk in terms of committee reports okay then talk in terms of keywords related to that subject okay same applies in terms of economics okay in terms of science and tech okay in terms of history so when i'll go with gs3 i'll use sdgs heavily okay i will use niti ayog reports i'll use second arc heavily in both paper 2 and paper 3 these things are something which i did this time and this actually gave me results which i did not do in 2019 okay so keywords associated with that subject is something which will give you an edge and in gs3 there is if at all you do not find any idea how to conclude go with sdgs this will give you marks remember every sdgs the sdg number and the uh, the content of that uh, sdg so this will help you for example let's say any question you get on water what i did i made a list of all the committees okay which has been important let's say the renke and idiot commission or the zaza committee or the mihirsa report or there are n number of committees so if a question comes on water i'll make sure that i somewhere use mihirsa committee recommendations or his reports similarly there are uh, committees for like many many uh, important issues in polity so that should uh, give the feel and again very important for gs4 in first attempt i wrote general answer i used examples heavily otherwise i'll tell you my quality of answer was not good but only because of examples i got good marks this time what i did i had examples as well as this time i was talking to them in ethical terms i mean like subject knowledge okay for example when you read about thinkers in ethics start from socrates plato aristotle then medieval thinkers then uh, modern thinkers postmodern thinkers okay so have the idea that at what time they came what did they speak in what context and background did they speak because this will help you even in your part one of gs4 which you might have seen that they gave a quote and uh, like a uh, verbatim of a thinker and you have to answer 
Now, if you remember the context when that thinker was, it will be easy. Apart from this, in GS4, try to relate Indian thinkers or scriptures with the like international thinkers. Okay, one thinker related to other thinker, and then have some you know formats for conclusion. For example, I'll use Gandhiji's talisman. I'll use that uh, seven sins. Okay, then I'll use some uh, quotes from Bhagavad Gita or some uh, uh, sayings of Quran or some sayings of you know Bible or uh, this uh, any any uh, scriptures and all. Okay, so if that is there, because what I found, you know, I went through the toppers essay, uh, sorry, GS4 answer sheet of 2019. 162 marks when i saw it i thought ki what she is writing and what i am writing there is like you know a like heaven and hell difference then i realized oh acha this is how we get 162 marks and she had written such beautiful answers okay i followed it and i tried to implement it so this is what like let's say there's a question uh, try to uh, include if gandhi ji is coming fine if swami vekananda is coming you include it if apj abdul kalam is coming if some values are coming okay and in this one one thing which i noticed i'll tell you for example let's say kindness okay kindness is a topic fine in gs uh, in part 1 you have to write in essay na no? uh, ethics okay so how to write a good answer on kindness if some thinker has told uh, something with regard to kindness for example uh, plato says that a uh, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a harder battle okay there are more dalai lama also says something on kindness okay so some one or two thinkers which who has to say something on kindness then kindness as a virtue okay how do you think this kindness can be manifested in multiple ways to help society or help create a more conducive and a more fair and balanced society okay then how this plays part for civil servants okay so actually i am trying to be a bit uh, faster because you know to wind up this session early because you might be feeling bored so in in case you feel that i am going fast you can ask me i'll be you know uh, g- uh, going slow so this is there then thinker done uh, aspects done linking it with the virtue kindness as a virtue done for example uh, you know uh, again linking this value with some other value for example forgiveness right so how we impl- interpret this if you can't be kind you can't have forgiveness only if a person is kind he will have this virtue that is forgiveness again in forgiveness there will be certain areas like uh, forgiving but not forgetting forgiving forgiving as well as forgetting so then how these values have helped the world in advancing towards humanity okay for example you see uh, india is known as the country which gives refuse to the people again dalai lama is the example okay so then how we you know uh, implement these values when when we talk about article 21 okay when we talk about vasudev kutumbakam okay when we talk about uh, giving uh, uh, like shelter is done other aspects which you can see so all these values has to be associated then examples world examples or examples of let's say you know uh, apj abdul kalam sir there are some examples given in uh, books regarding apj abdul kalam so we can put those there again if you have some example from your own life you can you are completely free and it is encouraged to use those in the ethics paper fine so in this way your G, uh, part 1 of ethics will be solved and regarding case studies you will have ample content on internet on youtube and everywhere you can go through them one thing that i would like to tell you is that have some repository of good ethical terms okay for example i had just made them and i used to like when are when you are having lunch or you are going somewhere you are in train or like try to utilize that time just go through that those keywords for example ethical myopia moral courage moral myopia then uh, pigmalion effect golem effect those pdf is there of some earlier toppers you can go through them very good like you can use it in ethics case studies for example let's say uh, there's a case of a uh, superstition which hunting and you are posted as a district administrator what will you do so we can say that you know uh, we will uh, use the children there as as moral agents okay who will be trying to convince their parents regarding you know the 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 superstition involved in witch hunting so this is what we have just used the keyword moral uh, agents okay then like uh, if there is uh, some uh, ethics case study i remember like in intro we can write that this case requires moral courage to tackle and take care of all the stakeholders with competing interest 
something like that okay where examiner will be able to see that fine he is having some ethical repository that is moral courage moral imagination moral agents moral policing moral licensing whatever terms are there then try to bring the constitutional aspect okay if you can relate that case study with some articles in the constitution some democratic values okay some human values fine so this will make the answers very holistic and we will be getting good marks so this was regarding paper 4 so i think this was overall brief uh, aspects with regard to uh, mains including notes making okay so then finally the interview part is there and in interview the most important thing is that uh, first is again it is as dicey and as vague as prelims first point second point is that when you will be preparing your daf you will have to prepare for every single keyword which you mention in your daf okay and then again uh, in interview since they tell upsc says that this is the test of your personality okay and this has to be a directed you know mark the keywords directed and purposive conversation okay this is very important okay directed purposive okay means this will have some you know specific flow of conversation and it has to be a purposive what is the purpose obviously they want you to be selected as an officer so this is there anyhow this is not followed in letter and spirit but this is there okay so and one more thing personality we cannot change overnight okay so i remember like i uh, this happens actually with me uh, when we read na for mains we are always you know uh, trying to complete the notes as fast as possible so we tend to you know uh, there comes a speed in our talk okay and when we go for interview there are people who are having much wisdom and they talk very politely like aram se they have no rush so there i used to have problem because uh, even vinay sir had told me that the speed with which you speak that is fine with the young people but not with the old people so then i tried to start you know meditation and all <laughs> <laughs> daily i used to uh, after my mains uh, after my mains result i began this Uh, before mains i used to have some 15 minutes of yoga and meditation like 20 25 minutes after before my interview i like took it to 45 minutes because i thought that i have to be very calm speak very slowly and those things i developed it was very you know it takes lot of time actually so if now you have this problem like i had talking fast this comes actually it's not you know willingly it comes because we have to learn so much so that comes so that is what i told you initially that there is a state of mind in prelims in mains in interview so interview is all together a different ball game fine you will have to have uh, in mains we write intro first we write body we write conclusion in interview you straight away has to first give your conclusion what do you think then i'll ask you okay why do you think then you will tell them that sir this is the reason i think so and then again whatever has been asked only that must has to be written anyhow this uh, being precise is some quality which we will develop once we write mains so that is not a problem but this will be a minor problem like talking slowly letting the other person absorb what we have said this is because of the age difference but this will come so this is a challenge then being very observant right from now okay whatever issues are happening being very unbiased okay it's not necessary that we take the stand of government it's not necessary that we refute every move of the government okay we have to be balanced where it requires a balance but where it requires to take a stand we must take a stand no problem in that okay so that is the wisdom which we need to develop and i believe that by the time you will write mains you will come to interview you will develop that wisdom that's not a big deal okay so this is all and again regarding uh, the core thing which i want you to take away see prelims and interview okay uh, prepare them but but uh, with a pinch of salt okay this is not in our hands like uh, by that i mean that relatively it is a bit it depends on non controllable external factors okay but this that is mains okay this fairly depends on our controllable internal factors okay mains and this is where you will you have to play the game okay this is what i realized so try to have target of 800 plus in your mains paper 
because if you bring 800 plus even if you land up in average score now you see what happens in interview interview whether I will get very good marks or not that is not a guarantee but yes I will not mess up the interview that is a guarantee if you remain very calm if you be very normal normal human being in interview okay unless and until some extraordinary thing happens you flung door you know uh, some uh, members they did not take it otherwise you will be safe you will get 160 or 154 fine this is the thing which is in our hand huh might be that we don't get 193 or 200 plus that is fine but this is the worst which is secured if this is on us okay then there are exceptions where we get 130 or double digit that is uh, an un unfortunate thing so this you see the average 160 even if you add 160 to this 800 there will be 960 okay and this marks you see you will be in some 200s so even if you are from a uh, unreserved category you will get IRS IT or even IPS because in 959 my, uh, my rank is 263 and in one marks we find that there are 11 people okay 950 only the list gets done and 9, uh, 965 is in 200, 170 something score. 9, 50, 960, one marks more than them, more than me, they are in 230s. So this is the role played by a single marks in the exam. This I did not realize in my first attempt, but this I realized in my third attempt. So this is the entire thing. Because what happens, again as I told you, mains, everyone will be having the same question. If it is difficult for you, it will be difficult for all the people who are writing mains. This, but this is subjective and here that luck element which we call you know, because objective this is objective so maybe that my tukka it worked your tukka did, it didn't work that is a different thing but this is the main game decider so fine so this is the overall regarding uh, the exam process so I hope that uh, we are about to culminate this session if you have questions with regard to strategy preparation you can ask so it's 125 we will have 10 minutes or 5 minutes if you want you can ask any doubt or query you have language of course language of course i didn't get you so it should be in english yeah 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 it should be in english don't don't uh, don't use hindi okay even in your essay if your if your medium of exam is english make sure that you use quotes in english ha huh, you can use somewhere like in at one or two instances it is advisable in essay not in ethics okay like even uh, what we used to do, na? see, like uh, Vasudev Kutumbakam, okay. So you write like this, na? no problem. Vasudev, this is Vasudev Kutumbakam. Hana, this way you can write. Don't use Hindi like this one. You can use this one, it's fine, manageable. Like you start your essay first. Uh, I say I had started writing after my prelims of 2019. Yeah. July, uh, June was the prelims, and July I started writing 2019. I, uh, I like what to say like we believe that the process is fair and rewarding uh, because you see even this year also this good rank from uh, rank 18 Ravi uh, he is you know uh, he has taken from Hindi medium so I don't think that you will be at disadvantage if you go with regional language or even Hindi this is what I believe but I might be wrong yeah Pardon, uh, one more, once more. Hobby. Uh, look, uh, I will be very frank once again. While preparing, I did not get very much time to work upon my hobby. But after my mains, I vigorously pursued my hobby. Because anyhow, <laughs> in interview, you have to be, you know, uh, very very sound and academically uh, you you must be a man of academic rigor in that hobby for example uh, my hobby was acting and public speaking and creative writing so i was asked on all these parameters even in acting we prepared terms like method acting snalaviski some th th terms are there which i never read otherwise so a uh, hobby uh, you tr i would recommend try to pursue it during your preparation if you get time there is no issue in that if you don't get time, no problem. You can relax in whatever way you want. So this is there. Like seriously, I did not get much time to prepare for my hobby during my exams. 
Okay, one second, please tell me. Yeah, so uh, like uh, she is asking that uh, if you people have pre started preparing right now, so is this the right time to take up answer writing? Yeah. So in this, uh, I have two opinions. First is that uh, you can start answer writing when you have at least basic content of whatever you read. Okay. Let's say if I want you to write a polity answer, at least once or twice you should have read Lakshmi Kant, minimum basic. Then you start with answer writing because if without completing your at least majority of the syllabus one time if you go with answer writing I personally feel that there will be problem I felt that that is there but you can do one thing uh, this is very good actually uh, which I believe let's say a topic is being taken in your class today let's say parliament or uh, in economics uh, plan planning commission planning when this topic is done you go to your room you take PYQ and solve or try to write answer on this topic which has been covered in the class as PYQ from PYQ and uh, show it to your like to your faculties this will be a good good approach like going with the answer writing simultaneously of things which have been covered because anyhow if I tell you to go with the PYQs of GS1 and some topics are there which you have not read till now it will make no sense to go with the answer writing so till your prelims okay till your prelims you can follow this approach attending the classes then solving PYQs based on those classes or secure or any any like uh, good question bank okay so that will be def uh, important but definitely first priority has to be given to previous year question paper very important this will help you in not only you know uh, understanding that whether you have understood a topic properly or not but also how questions can be framed on a particular topic this is very important okay so this is the point and then once you are done with your prelims then you can uh, join mains test series and go with the uh, tests so some question was from the back one second interview experience uh, uh, first time there was BS Basisa's board and I uh, like 2019 when I had come here uh, some faculty had told me like who is not now in part of insights that Basi like Basisa grills so what happened now yeah this is also important I want to tell you all that you know anyone if he says anything fine take everything with a pinch of salt even you know whatever I am I am saying that is like this is what how I did and you all know that there are so many toppers every year every topper will have his or her own strategy but yes we can learn some parts from everyone and uh, you know uh, like there is a concept of filtering through the cultural lens of one's own context so that is very much applicable whatever you feel suits your personality best go with that from that particular toppers strategy or his you know uh, session you take that thing selectively that is important so uh, interview experience uh, Basi sir board I uh, like the moment the peon uh, like the uh, the staff comes and he takes us then we ask him that sir whose board by the time he will tell you and you will reach like you will reach there by the time you frame of uh, imagine your mind he told me BS Bassi I told her a r a Bassi sir like I was I was a bit scared he, he grills then I like consoled myself okay it is fine he will not grill you <laughs> then I went there and I was first to go so I was first to go and then it was post covid so uh, it was good actually they asked me he asked me that why do you have why have you taken public administration as optional okay then uh, he had asked me regarding the aspects of uh, this one ethics in uh, technology okay AI he asked me that can AI replace human beings in future what is your opinion so these questions were there so there will be you know questions based on facts and opinion there will be two kinds fine so these are there and then uh, he asked me a question very interesting uh, regarding uh, he told me that uh, I give you three options uh, one is uh, Vladimir Putin another one is Xi Jinping and the third is Donald Trump so whom do you consider the best leader as per you so this was a question which I was given this was an interesting question then they asked me some questions with regard to public administration and yes one uh, member was there he asked me questions with regard to mechanical engineering uh, I don't know from where like why did, did this happen actually he began with uh, global GHG, uh, GHG gases 
and uh, global warming, uh, glass uh, greenhouse effect. So I kept on giving answers and he kept on raising the level. Ultimately, uh, he asked me about some super critical, uh, some uh, thing was in news at that time, I am not uh, uh, able to recollect it right now. It was regarding some super critical and subcritical uh, temperature mechanism which is which is known to mechanical engineer guys. So there I finally told that sir I am not aware of this. Then he told me good but that was good actually. So what happens is na, that if you will keep on answering they will keep on going. So, <laughs> so you need to at last you need to tell them that sir uh, I am uh, really sorry I will read about it. So that their ego is satisfied and actually it is fine also. <laughs> no, it is fine actually because they are much learned and much revered than us isn't it. So this is fine but that will not be negative. I, I mean I think that at any point of time in interview it should not appear that you know we are overconfident or uh, we are trying to be you know uh, like I have cleared mains so I am sitting here this should not be there we have, we have to be very humble this is what they check. So that, that part was completely something which I had not prepared because it was no way connected to my DAF anything. I am a computer engineer I have PubAd optional I have nothing to do with these mechanical engineering concepts I talked to my seniors who are in service they told uh, we wonder why they, why did they ask you because they he began with thermal power plants issues with thermal power plants coal fire plants I kept them answering then he asked me what will happen if uh, GHG gases are removed altogether I gave them the answer so it went on like he was asking I was giving asking giving and went to the next level so this was there so this was my first interview second interview it was very smooth like I answered everything which I had prepared and they asked me the same thing I was very happy very confident that this time I will get good marks but both time same marks so this is with regard to interview yeah question uh, see book list I uh, will not repeat here because it will consume time I already have telegram channel and even like uh, insights book list mostly I followed that only so book list you will get like it is not a big deal I only like uh, tell that which every topper will tell uh, read like minimum sources maximum revision this is the only point like and uh, personally I felt like I had some phobia with having huge piles of books I kept very minimum book and uh, to your surprise in my first attempt because I did not have time actually I read only two books for my optional that two both books are around 250 pages so it is uh, Aribam book comes for Pabad I only did those two books nothing else I did no test series uh, no coaching for optional nothing ok so this was there uh, otherwise books you will get on internet and all it is more or less it is same only yeah last three months ok that is what uh, if three months that is 90 days and then you have to prioritize like if you have not given test series ok so focus that if you have given test series go for revision if you have not given test series this is the time you should try to give test series plus you have to solve PYQs for 60 days last one month do not study anything new ok uh, newspapers will continue till uh, D day minus 15 ok till D day minus 15 newspapers will be done but uh, before this stop everything from last one month only revise revise and revise again you have to prioritize in these 60 days basic books very important basic books plus whatever current affairs notes you have made ok during your uh, yearly preparation you have to revise them and you can uh, deduce your own plan based on the basis of you know like uh, what I used to do for example polity, economics, geography, science and tech I first used to or mark the subjects which I have to read then I used to uh, see the time I am having for example 60 days then I used to segregate them as per my strength like polity, polity if I know I am very good in polity I will give it 4 days only economics if I feel I am I need more I will give 6 days to it this way I used to give days and I used to adjust the series in it and in this manner I used to do it. So this can be a strategy to like cover it because what happens is now this will help you in tracking ok like if you have given 4 days and someday you feel like I do not want to study so that flexibility has to be in this routine ok for example there has to be some miscellaneous like 4 days for example let us say you planned geography to be covered in 3 days but you find that you need 1 day more what happens if 
schedule is watertight, there will be a problem. You will feel pressure. Ki, are, I have uh, like this much portion is left. Have this miscellaneous. Then mind will tell you, okay, fine, four days hai, udar kar lenge. We'll do it there. So this will help you in like let's say one day you took some half day extra break. This will be adjusted in this miscellaneous. So I used to make this not very detailed routine. This simple number of subjects, number of days, number of tests, previous year question papers. This has to be in those 60 or 90 days. This was my like strategy. Okay. So any other question? Uh, economics. Uh, economics I did uh, first time I had done first attempt Sankar Ganesh. Okay, because I had less time and obviously NCRT economics is important. Then even if you are getting uh, class notes that will be sufficient. Otherwise I had done uh, from internet like Nodal and all. So you can do that also that is also good. But even if in class you are getting good notes that will be sufficient. Huh, only thing is that have conceptual clarity in economics because this is more or less like science and tech. If you understand the concepts and as you might be seeing that off late the questions in economics for prelims is becoming analytical. Okay, so that way you have to study. Okay, and for science and tech, uh, I used to do the current affairs booklet only of the institute. Okay, and apart from it, yeah, one thing you can do is that there's a YouTube channel. I'm forgetting the name of the channel. Uh, what they do now? They prepare some two to three minutes video, very good video. Okay, uh, you will get on like RNA interfacing was there. Blockchain was there, uh, Li-Fi was there. These topics I got from this YouTube channel. I don't remember the name right now. What I used to do, I used to create a playlist, add all the videos. Okay, it hardly five minutes. Even if there are 50 topics, 250 minutes, which means around 2.5 hours, uh, four, four hours around. Okay, so that any time I'll just uh, like take out and I'll read it. So this way I used to do science and tech. I mean take the help of internet in science and tech because there you will be having if they'll explain in 3d you will understand better plus application part is very important of any technology okay so technology when we read so what is the technology what is what is the science behind this technology then what is the application part okay so this these things if you are covering you will be able to uh, like score good marks in prelims as well as in mains exam okay so any other question? Uh, my channel name is uh, Road to Civils. Uh, R O A D Road. Road to Civils. Okay. Road to Civils. So then uh, this is the overall thing. And regarding, you know, uh, when I came here, uh, I was as Minister had told that I was uh, not very uh, uh, well financially. So I had given the exam. I had uh, got the scholarship. So then I came uh, with scholarship to insights and then again uh, Vinay sir was you know like uh, the insights and Vinay sir it was like it is like a family and whenever I used to feel uh, depressed or uh, like you know uh, feeling down I used to go to him we used to sit and he used to tell me that Are ho jayega. you will make it don't worry just do whatever you are doing. So uh, whenever I felt a source of motivation apart from myself doing all things I simply used to go to him sit for some 10 15 minutes relax again come back to library and study so this was there and whatever support in terms of infrastructure or you know in terms of library in terms of uh, materials test series and all you know you will be having as part of insights which i had so these you know play a role as a facilitator at the end of the day it's we we have to this is our call that we are here to crack this exam and you know a good mentor a good institute plays the role of a catalyst in our preparation. So that is the role of insights. And this was my journey and preparation. So I hope like uh, you all would have taken something from this session and thank you for coming. And I, I pray and I wish that all of you succeed in this exam and few years hence you be this side and there will be other youths whom you will be guiding because you know I when I become nostalgic some four years back I used to be sitting uh, there in, on these benches and toppers used to come we used to like uh, attend these uh, talks and then we used to you know uh, prepare and set our own targets so wish all of you a very good luck and may the best forces be with you thank you so much thank you.